3,000 orbits of the Earth, a mission of 78.4 million miles. We are just uh, less than 31 minutes away from the engine firing of 4 minutes and 39 seconds now that will slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second to enable the Soyuz to drop out of orbit to begin its entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing just one hour and 24 minutes from now on the steppe of Kazakhstan, 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, where Russian search and recovery forces will be awaiting the arrival of these three crew members who have spent uh, half a year in space. Everything is in great shape aboard the uh, Soyuz spacecraft. All the systems are uh, checked out, ready to go. Just a short time ago, just a few minutes ago, the director of the Cosmonaut uh, Training Center in Star City, Russia, Pavel Vlasov, who directs the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, radioed up to the crew that uh, conditions at the landing site are calm and peaceful. He described the air as fresh with low humidity and said the landing site has the smell of spring. It smells like freshly cut grass. Have a good flight home to your home planet. Those words coming from Pavel Vlasov, the director of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. And we are standing by At the airport in uh, Jez Kazgan, uh, the forward uh, staging site for tonight's landing and recovery operations, a dozen MI-8 helicopters are uh, set to take off a short time from now, uh, most of them heading uh, for the prime landing site to, to the southeast of Jez Kazgan. Two of the helicopters to move uh, to the midpoint between uh, the landing site and the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in the event uh, of a ballistic landing, the unlikely event of a shortfall in the uh, trajectory of the Soyuz back to Earth. And uh, two additional helicopters uh, will be poised uh, in the vicinity, uh, all uh, of the bases covered, to recover the crew as quickly as possible following their touchdown in their Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft. The three returning crew members, Kate Rubens of NASA, Sergei uh, Rizhikov, who's the Soyuz MS-17 commander and who was also the Expedition 64 commander during uh, this long uh, duration mission aboard the International Space Station, and flight engineer Sergei Kud Sverchkov are uh, in the home stretch of their flight. Uh, Rubens, uh, when she lands, will have uh, logged 300 days in space on her two flights, the fourth most days in space by a U.S. female astronaut behind Peggy Whitson, Christina Cook, and Sonny Williams. Sergei Ryzhikov will have logged 185 days in space on his two missions uh, over this increment, Expeditions 63-64, and will have totaled 358 days in space on his two flights. Could Sverchkov is wrapping up his first flight into space. Some five hours ago aboard the International Space Station, the three departing crew members uh, had an opportunity one final time to say goodbye to the uh, crew members who are remaining on board the station, now part of Expedition 65, that officially began with the undocking of the Soyuz uh, from the International Outpost. They had a chance uh, to say farewell to one another and then make their way into the uh, Soyuz spacecraft where they subsequently closed the hatches. Uh, those hatches uh, swung closed at 5.24 p.m. Central Time, 6.24 p.m. Eastern Time, after which the uh, three departing crew members uh, began a series of leak checks on their side of the docking interface, as did the station crew on their side in the Poisk module of the International Space Station. The uh, three uh, Expedition 64 crew members who are coming back to Earth this evening, Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov, then donned their Russian Sokol launch and entry suits, conducted leak checks on those suits, closed uh, the hatches uh, to the uppermost portion of uh, the uh, Soyuz spacecraft, the orbital module section, and uh, configured uh, all of their systems, conducted communications checks, and everything is in great shape. Uh, for tonight's landing.
at uh, 8.34 p.m. Central Time, 9.34 p.m. Eastern Time, as uh, the International Space Station flew over the Mongolian Chinese border. Uh, hooks were opened uh, between the Soyuz and the Poisk module. Springs on both sides of the docking interface pushed off against one another, and the Soyuz was free, backing away from uh, the docking port to which it had relocated just a month ago to free up the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station for the arrival last week of three new crew members who uh, made their way to the space station, that uh, being Oleg Novitsky, uh, Pyotr Dubrov, and uh, NASA's Mark Vandehei. The uh, Soyuz uh, slowly backed away. There were two firings of uh, Soyuz thrusters and a pair of separation burns to maintain an opening rate and increase that opening rate uh, from uh, the International Space Station. The Soyuz has now moved uh, to a position some uh, 32 kilometers away from the International Space Station in preparation for the deorbit burn that will be coming up less than 25 minutes from now. Twenty-five minutes of thrust deactivation, attitude is nominal, and the angle is currently 185.5. The deorbit burn is scheduled at 11.01 uh, .01 p.m. Central Time. It, again, will be a four-minute, 39-second uh, retrograde firing, a braking maneuver of the Soyuz engines to slow the vehicle down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit. Some 28 minutes after the deorbit burn, pyrotechnics will uh, fire to separate the three sections of the Soyuz. The three crew members on the center section or descent module will feel uh, the G-forces building up around them as they move through the plasma regime of the Earth's atmosphere. Once they exit the plasma uh, regime, uh, the command will be given to open up the parachutes 15 minutes before touchdown. First a drogue chute followed by a giant main chute and uh, the Soyuz will be canted into the correct position for its altimeter to measure its rate of descent and its altitude uh, from the landing site. Just a few seconds before touchdown, soft landing engines will fire, and the Soyuz will be home with landing scheduled at 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning. At the, the landing site, uh, just a few clouds uh, are uh, noticed uh, at about the 25,000-foot level, visibility in excess of six miles. The temperature at landing time is expected to be about 64 degrees Fahrenheit, an ideal Saturday spring morning for the homecoming of Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kud Sverchkov. Again, uh, the Russian search and recovery forces are uh, ready to go from the Jezkazgan airport. Uh, the uh, various uh, recovery team members that includes embedded NASA personnel are already on their respective helicopters. Uh, at the time of the deorbit burn, rotors will be spinning and the helicopters will set off for about a 35-minute helicopter ride from Jezkazgan to the landing zone, some 91 miles to the southeast. They will arrive in a sequential fashion, will uh, begin to circle uh, in a racetrack fashion around the landing zone, waiting uh, for the arrival of the Soyuz under its chutes. After touchdown, those helicopters will land uh, very quickly uh, in a sequential fashion again. Uh, the first of the helicopters uh, will be down to erect an inflatable orange medical tent near the capsule to which uh, the three crew members will be carried in their chairs uh, once they are extracted from the Soyuz and have a chance uh, to sit in those chairs for a few minutes to get their land legs back. Again, they'll be carried in those chairs into the medical tent where they'll uh, be helped out of their Sokol launch and entry suits. They'll get into more comfortable clothing. They'll undergo a series of medical tests before boarding three helicopters, one for each crew member, for a two-hour, 15-minute flight back uh, to uh, Karaganda, Kazakhstan, uh, which uh, was the initial staging city for tonight's landing operations. In Karaganda is a NASA jet and a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft. Those uh, two aircraft uh, will be waiting for the arrival of the crew members who will split up at that point 
with Kate Rubens boarding the NASA jet for a flight back to Houston, and uh, the two cosmonauts boarding their aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Two uh, milestones uh, following the deorbit burn, and uh, you will be hearing uh, uh, Soyuz Commander Sergei Ryzhikov uh, through an interpreter calling out uh, the duration of the burn and uh, tank pressures uh, and the uh, delta V or the change in velocity as uh, the burn continues for the duration of its four minutes and 39 seconds. Once the burn is completed, the uppermost uh, section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft, the orbital module, will be depressurized about 10 seconds after the completion of the burn. That will set the stage for its uh, pyrotechnic separation from the rest of the Soyuz uh, vehicle uh, once uh, we have completed the burn about 28 minutes after the deorbit burn prior to the entrance of the descent module with the three crew members back into the Earth's atmosphere. Once the Soyuz has moved to a distance of about 120 kilometers away from the International Space Station, we are expecting uh, VHF voice communications to become ratty and perhaps unavailable uh, because of the distance involved in the geometry between the antennas on the Soyuz spacecraft and the International Space Station. Uh, it will uh, be, uh, sometimes we uh, get lucky, and the communications hang in there, sometimes not so much. So we'll see what happens this evening. But once the Soyuz uh, moves toward the vicinity of the landing site, there is a, a Russian Antonov uh, 26 uh, space, uh, fixed wing aircraft that operates as a uh, flying command and control center through which uh, voice and data will be relayed back to uh, Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. So we'll be standing by to see whether or not uh, we hang in there with communications all the way down or lose communications. Don't be surprised if we go uh, with a loss of signal for a period of time and then reacquire communications with the Soyuz as it approaches the landing site. As we've mentioned uh, in our earlier broadcast tonight, uh, this is an unprecedented period of human spaceflight activity uh, at the International Space Station with uh, 14 astronauts and cosmonauts coming and going from the outpost in four different spacecraft over a three-week period. This uh, landing tonight uh, is the second of a four-act series that will continue next week at the Kennedy Space Center with the scheduled launch next Thursday on a SpaceX Dragon vehicle, the Endeavor of uh, Shane Kimbrough, Megan MacArthur, Aki Hoshide, and Thomas Pesquet as uh, that multinational crew launches from launch pad 39A at the Cape uh, to uh, rendezvous and dock uh, to the International Space Station to expand uh, the station's population from its current uh, seven-person crew to an 11 person crew for a period of time, a short period of time, until uh, the crew one astronauts who launched back in November, Mike Hopkins, Victor Glover, Soichi Noguchi, and um, Shannon Walker, who's the current commander of the International Space Station, until they return, their, their scheduled undocking and splashdown is scheduled for April 28th. So a busy time at the International Space Station. Air traffic control uh, definitely uh, is uh, the uh, prevailing uh, activity uh, for uh, not only the uh, station uh, astronauts and cosmonauts, but for uh, program officials and the international partnership as they make their way methodically, step by step, to ensure the uh, safe launch and landing and return to Earth of all of these crew members 
in the uh, continuing permanent human occupancy of the International Laboratory. To give you a sense of uh, all of the vehicles uh, currently at the International Space Station, you can see in this graphic uh, the current uh, configuration, the Soyuz MS-17, of course, uh, undocked a few hours ago, so it's gone, uh, ready for its deorbit burn to begin the uh, trip back to Earth. The Soyuz MS-18 that carried uh, Mark Vandehei, Oleg Novitsky, and Pyotr Dubrov to the station a week ago is uh, docked to the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Also present, uh, the Crew-1 Dragon spacecraft, at the uh, zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module, soon to be joined by a second Crew Dragon, the Crew, the Crew 2 Dragon, that will dock to the forward port of Harmony. And you see two uh, unpiloted uh, Russian Progress cargo ships and the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo ship also present at the International Space Station. And confirm. We're now 14 and a half minutes away from the start of the deorbit burn. Again, a four minute, 39 second firing of the Soyuz engines to uh, slow it down by 128 meters per second, enabling it to drop out of orbit to begin its high speed return back to Earth. The uh, Russian Search and Recovery Forces uh, that belong to the uh, Russian civilian agency called Rosaviatsa are all at the uh, Jez Kazgan Airport. Uh, those personnel all aboard uh, Russian Mi-8 military helicopters with uh, rotors about to spin up. The first of those helicopters uh, to depart the airport for the landing site at about the time of the deorbit burn some 12 and a half minutes from now. Amongst uh, the NASA contingent uh, participating uh, in Kazakhstan uh, tonight uh, for tonight's landing and recovery operations include uh, Trisha Mack, who's the uh, Director of Human Spaceflight Programs in Russia, Bill Spetch uh, from the International Space Station Program Office, uh, representing uh, mission integration and operations for tonight's recovery operations, uh, Dr. Natasha Cho, who is uh, Kate Rubin's flight surgeon, a series of uh, Russian nurses attending to the three crew members with their own respective uh, flight surgeons as well. NASA Public Affairs Officer Courtney Beasley uh, will be uh, on one of the first helicopters down to the landing site, along with Bill Ingalls, NASA's chief photographer. Astronaut Drew Morgan 
is uh, representing the astronaut office uh, for tonight's recovery operations. A, a veteran of a long duration mission aboard the International Space Station that launched on the 50th anniversary of uh, America's landing on the moon on Apollo 11. Coming up on the 10 minute mark before the deorbit burn, everything quiet aboard the uh, Soyuz vehicle. The uh, Soyuz commander, Sergei Rizhikov, seated in the center seat of the uh, descent module, the centermost section of the three section Soyuz spacecraft, flanked on his left by Sergei Kud Sverchkov and Kate Rubens on his right. And uh, there's uh, a cutaway view of the uh, descent module. Again, uh, the crew strapped in, having checked out uh, their spacesuits. Uh, they are clad in their Sokol launch and entry suits. Soon uh, to feel the first effects of Earth's gravity for the first time in more than six months. But the power has been shut off to the sensor. Is that right? One minute has passed, but the flag is still there, and we have, um, we did send the command though for the deactivation, um, and so uh, power supply to uh, the EKV is um, not being supplied, but you still have the, you don't have the flag. Is that right? Yes. And we confirm depot thrusters are firing and we have like 20 minutes left. Copy. We confirm the maneuver to SKD. SKD is minus eight minutes. And on the, in, the right info, we are sending the command. And D9, Delta 9 is illuminated. S Sierra 9 is illuminated. Copy, Sierra 9 is illuminated. Unintelligible. We copy. Countdown clocks uh, now hit the seven minute mark prior to the deorbit burn. Four minutes and 39 second engine firing to slow uh, the Soyuz down and enable it to drop out of orbit to begin its trip back to Earth.
Coming up on the six-minute mark uh, prior to the deorbit burn, just about one hour until touchdown. Parameters before yesterday activation. I have the parameters written down. We have integrated gaso. We have the pressure tank pre um, 155 for the first and 157. For the second one, prop is nominal. And 18 point, and 77.74. 774 is the pressure in the descent module, and for the tanks, we have 18.1 and 18.2. Did you say 18.1 and 18.2? Yes, affirmative. Four and a half minutes now until the deorbit burn. Sergei Rizhikov just a moment ago reading off uh, propulsion parameters uh, for the Russian flight controllers in Koryov. Everything in good shape. The stage is set for the start of the journey home for Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. One minute till SKDS was the activation and everything's fine on board. We copy. You please depress. Uh, you can depress the transmit button during the thrust of firing. Copy. Flight controllers uh, in Koryov uh, will be expecting uh, Rizhikov to provide uh, continuous commentary of the progress of the deorbit burn. Uh, so that his, uh, his reports uh, can match up to uh, all of the parameters that the flight controllers are seeing at their consoles. In uh, Koryov, you're looking at a uh, live view from a balcony camera overlooking the Russian flight control room. Two and a half minutes away now from the deorbit burn. One minute to Eskadetig. On board, everything is a okay. Ninety seconds now until the deorbit burn. We're getting close to uh, one minute before escadetic. Yes, 
Good coffee. Let's get a TIG minus one. Less than a minute uh, before the initiation of the deorbit burn, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, at the airport in Jezkazgan have their rotors spinning, ready to take off in sequential fashion, heading for the landing site. Copy. Going to page 51. 30 seconds. 30 seconds to Skadetig. Select um, maneuver or uh, Skadetig burn. Uh, monitoring. Copy. Transmit. Ten seconds away, standing by for the start of the deorbit burn. Copy. Engine start, deorbit burn underway. Current position. Zero, uh, at um, zero forty-seven, zero forty-eight seconds, five and a half, delta V. Change in velocity being reported uh, now by Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz commander. This is a four-minute, thirty-nine-second retrograde maneuver. Thirteen decimal eight over thirty seconds, and we are on page fifty-three, working for the table. Copy. O2 supply uh, is activated from the gas analyzer. One minute, 26 decimal two delta V. KDU parameters are nominal, uh, propellant Consumption nominal, one minute, 15 seconds, 33, and 0.8 delta V. The Soyuz continues to decelerate uh, as planned. Now a minute and a half into the burn. Uh, firing uh, one minute, 30 seconds into the thruster operation, 41 decimal zero delta V. The parameters are nominal. Copy, Sergey, the second. One minute, 47, 49, uh, Delta V, after one minute, 47 seconds. Copy. Two minutes, 54 decimal fours, Delta V. Copy, and that is nominal. Um, we confirm. Uh, the burn is going nominally. Two minutes, 15 uh, seconds. 61 decimal six, delta V. Two and a half minutes into the burn. About two minutes to go. Two minutes, 30 seconds. 68 decimal niner, delta V. All parameters and um, uh, propellant Consumption is nominal. Copy. Two minutes, 45 seconds, 74 decimal, eight delta V. Three minutes into the burn, everything is uh, going as planned. At the uh, specified time. At three minutes, 83 decimal uh, zero uh, delta V and all CADU integrated propulsion system. System parameters are nominal. At three minutes, 15 seconds, a delta V gained, uh, 88 decimal niner. Three and a half minutes, 96 decimal nine. Uh, prop propellant consumption is nominal. Copy. Approaching the four minute mark into the burn, about 39 seconds left. Four 
minutes of uh, Escadel firing. Uh, LTV gained 109 decimal nine. All Cadeau parameters are still nominal. Copy. We're standing by a four main engine cutoff command in about 20 seconds. Copy and concur. 10 seconds, two main engine cutoff. Command 124 Delta V. Copy. And the deorbit burn is complete and reported to have been perfectly executed. Kate Rubens, Sergei Kud Sverchkov, and Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov on their way home. At 070613, uh, KSB is open in a docking compartment. Uh, we have uh, stable pressure at 744, uh, and the pressure is dropping in orbital module. And as planned, uh, the uh, orbital module, the topmost section of the three-section Soyuz vehicle being depressurized, this uh, in advance of the uh, pyrotechnic separation of the three portions of the Soyuz spacecraft coming up at uh, 11.29, about 22 minutes or so from now, that uh, will uh, leave the descent module and the three crew members on their own with the heat shield uh, in the direction of travel toward the landing site uh, southeast of Jezkazgan in uh, southern Kazakhstan. Favor in Moscow. Favor are here. Right now, uh, we're continuing to drop pressure in the orbital module. Uh, currently, the orbital module pressure uh, is 115. And um, the docking compartment. Uh, pressure is stable at 744. Copy. We can uh, check the view settings. Moscow, favor, we cannot hear you. If you can hear us, the pressure in orbital module is less than 100. 97 currently. Uh, um, in the blind, um, we are aware that we have to uh, seal our pressure helmets at the 0720 or by 0723.55, no later. Um, but we're planning to do so uh, a little bit earlier at 07, at uh, 21 ish. Copy. We have you loud and clear. We have 20 minutes to module separation. And O2 supply is continuing. Soyuz Commander Sergei Rizhikov uh, maintaining a running dialogue uh, with flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center. Reporting on Soyuz systems, the crew uh, putting their visors down on their helmets. This uh, in preparation for the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz. The topmost section called the orbital module and the lower section, the instrumentation and propulsion module, 
They will be uh, separating soon. The separation uh, pyrotechnics expected at about uh, 11.30 p.m. Central Time. That will allow the uh, descent module uh, to fly on its own uh, with its computers honed in on uh, the landing site about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Favore, mission control. Favore, are here. We hear you through the noise. How would you read us? We have you loud and clear. Uh, we can verify uh, BIOS power and uh, BIOS readiness. Everything's in order on board. Uh, the pressure is uh, rising a little bit bit on board in the docking compartment um, because of O2 being supplied into the cabin. Right now it's 748, uh, otherwise everything is nominal on board. And um, in 10 minutes we're planning to seal the pressure helmet. Um, please uh, go through the uh, last minute uh, buddy checks, uh, verify that your uh, um, straps are uh, strapped in tightly. That your knee pads are positioned properly. Moscow, we cannot understand anything you're saying. The uh, Soyuz is uh, moving further and further away uh, from the uh, International Space Station to a point to a point where VHF voice communications is expected to become ratty, if not unavailable, for a period of time until the spacecraft uh, approaches the landing site and uh, begins uh, to uh, provide uh, communications capability with the Antonov 26 uh, Airborne Command Center. The uh, fixed-wing aircraft that is part of the search and recovery forces that uh, is airborne flying around the landing zone to act as a relay station for data and voice back to the Russian Mission Control Center. 15 seconds left to module separation. A copy. Please check your knee pads. Uh, make sure that uh, the uh, ODF books are uh, the hard uh, copies are uh, secured well. Moscow, um, we cannot understand what you're saying. Please repeat. Everything quiet uh, here in Mission Control in Houston as uh, the voice communications uh, begins to diminish uh, between the Soyuz spacecraft and the Russian flight control team simply because of the distance now that the Soyuz has moved away from the International Space Station and the uh, location and positioning of the antennas on the Soyuz relative to the relay antennas for VHF communications through the station. Favor, if you can hear Moscow. Before module separation, please verify uh, the positioning of your knee pads. Uh, make sure that the uh, hard copies of your uh, procedures are securely restrained uh, with um, bungees or straps. We cannot hear you, Moscow. We don't understand what you're saying. 
Um, just letting you know that uh, uh, we are aware um, that we have um, module separation coming up at 072955. Everything's still uh, ready on board. Copy. Sergey Ryzhikov uh, reassuring flight controllers in Moscow, even though they cannot hear uh, the flight controllers calling them at this point. They understand that uh, we're within 14 minutes of the scheduled uh, separation of the three sections of the Soyuz through pyrotechnics. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, based on the last report from Sergey Ryzhikov, everything uh, going very well on board the Soyuz MS-17. The next uh, major event coming up in about 11 minutes, the uh, separation of the three sections of the Soyuz as uh, the descent module with the three crew members strapped inside uh, will then fly free with its onboard computers uh, targeting uh, the landing site to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. This is an animation of the uh, separation of those three sections. The orbital module and the instrumentation and propulsion module separate from the descent module that then enters the Earth's atmosphere, building up heat, repelling the heat through its uh, heat shield before the deployment of a drogue chute and then the large main chute We'll talk more about uh, the physics of uh, the chute deployment and the behavior of the Soyuz spacecraft once we get past uh, module separation. Landing uh, is still scheduled for 11.56 p.m. Central Time, 10.56 a.m. Kazakhstan Time on Saturday morning. The weather uh, reports indicate clear skies, uh, very light winds, temperature around 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, with the completion of the deorbit burn a short time ago, uh, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters are all airborne en route to the landing site. This is all very carefully choreographed and timed so that the helicopters arrive in a circular racetrack pattern around the landing zone shortly before the arrival of the Soyuz under its chutes.
The uh, separation of the uh, three sections of the Soyuz will occur at an altitude of about 87 miles. All done uh, by automatic uh, commanding from the onboard computers, firing pyrotechnics uh, to enable the three sections to separate from one another. In the center section or descent module, Soyuz Commander Sergei Ryzhikov flying under the call sign of Favore. Uh, in the center seat, flanked on his left by Sergei Kud Sverchkov and on his right by Kate Rubens. The uh, landing site coordinates uh, calculated by the Russian flight control team in Koryov call uh, for the Soyuz to be targeting uh, a landing spot at 47.2 north, 69.3 east. The pressure helmets are sealed, and um, the um, automatic uh, the avionics are um, activated, is that correct? And you have the roof handle in your hands, correct? So visors are now down uh, for the three crew members in the descent module of the Soyuz MS-17. Some six minutes away from the expected separation of the modules. Countdown clocks uh, here in Mission Control in Houston ticking backward toward the expected landing time just over 31 minutes from now. Moscow Station. A separation of the modules is in four and a half minutes. Copy, favor. So, uh, a bit of uh, continuing uh, communications uh, confirming uh, the expected time uh, for the module separation around 11.29 p.m. Central Time.
передача сжата, работа на роде конвейтер. Our push to talk button is um, depressed, and the transmit button is released. Copy. Favore, how do you read us? Again, uh, these intermittent uh, communications between uh, the Soyuz and uh, the Russian Mission Control Center expected. This is a uh, nominal uh, occurrence because of the distance the Soyuz is away from VHF communications capability from the International Space Station as it uh, prepares for module separation. We're about a minute or so away from uh, the anticipated time for module separation. Russian uh, search and recovery forces airborne en route to the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan. Everything continuing to go smoothly. The reports are now in from the Russian Mission Control Center that module separation has occurred on time. The uh, Soyuz descent module with the three crew members strapped in their seats in their Sokol launch and entry suits are barreling toward the landing site southeast of Jezkazgan. The next uh, major event, uh, some three minutes from now, when the vehicle enters uh, the Earth's atmosphere at an altitude of 100 kilometers. Once uh, the Soyuz approaches uh, the landing site some 15 minutes before touchdown, there is an uh, intricate uh, parachute deployment sequence that is triggered by a barometric pressure sensor when uh, the vehicle is about 41,000 feet above the ground. At that point, the main parachute cover is first jettisoned by pyrotechnic devices and springs. This will pull out a pair of extraction chutes which in, turns pull, which in turn pulls out the drogue chute, which in turn pulls out the main parachute. It takes about 20 seconds for all of this to happen. When the atmospheric pressure that is measured around the Soyuz uh, reaches uh, the proper levels, a uh, barometric pressure sensor starts a timer that triggers most of the remaining events in the landing sequence. At an altitude of about 18,000 feet off the ground, commands are issued to jettison the heat shield and to open valves to vent hydrogen peroxide, uh, fuel for the entry control thrusters, and oxygen in the life support system tank. If we're fortunate enough to get video, 
of the Soyuz under the chutes, uh, we may be seeing that uh, white smoke uh, that is the venting, the normal venting of hydrogen peroxide and oxygen into the air so that um, the vehicle can be safe for landing without a, an abundance of hazardous, hazardous gases remaining in the tanks when the soft landing thrusters fire just milliseconds before touchdown. The uh, Soyuz uh, now uh, beginning to enter the Earth's atmosphere. This will mark uh, the first effects of Earth's gravity against the bodies of the three crew members for the first time in 185 days. We're inside uh, 23 minutes until the anticipated touchdown of the Soyuz on the steppe of Kazakhstan to wrap up a 78.4 million mile mission. Unintelligible. The uh, three crew members in the uh, descent module of the Soyuz MS-17 should be seeing the first effects of plasma, a fireball building around the spacecraft where temperatures uh, rise to about 2,500 degrees ablated by the uh, Soyuz heat shield. The Soyuz uh, computers also uh, providing entry guidance to fine tune uh, the path of the spacecraft toward the landing site on the steppe of Kazakhstan. The uh, spacecraft and the crew members should be emerging from this plasma regime in about three and a half minutes or so.
Favore, Sofu Moskvi. Favore, MCC Moscow. Flight controllers at uh, the Russian Mission Control Center attempting to contact the Soyuz, but uh, as expected, communications uh, not expected uh, to provide a response as uh, the Soyuz descends in the heat peaking regime during its entry back to Earth. Touchdown expected about 18 and a half minutes from now. The Soyuz spacecraft should be emerging from this plasma regime about a minute from now. And uh, as it approaches the landing site, communications should be established through uh, the search and recovery forces in the Antonov-26 fixed-wing aircraft around the landing zone serving as a command and control relay station. We confirm atmospheric re-entry with a plus 90 minutes. Ten, how are you feeling? Great. Let's see set pressure. It is 772. Copy. 772 is the set pressure. What's the max G load? It was 3.8. Uh, maybe 395. We copy 395. Please make sure that the uh, ODF procedures are secured. And once the fees are primed, make sure that you put the translation and the rotational hand controllers in the corresponding position. This tweet is about 1 and integer 0 0.1, and the integer is 10, plus 10, affirmative, plus 10. This is Mission Control Houston, almost like clockwork. Uh, communications reestablished between Mission Control uh, in Karlyov and uh, Sergei Rizhikov, the Soyuz commander. The uh, crew are now out of uh, the plasma regime. Atmospheric entry was a nominal occurrence, and we're standing by now uh, for the opening uh, of the parachutes, the command to begin the parachute uh, deployment sequence. Time to touch down about 14 and a half minutes. Please tighten your shoulder strap.
13 and a half minutes until touchdown. Parachutes uh, should have been commanded to deploy by now. This is Mission Control Houston, 12 minutes until touchdown of the Soyuz MS-17 on the steppe of Kazakhstan. We uh, fully expect that the chutes have been deployed by now, although we're still awaiting confirmation of that from the crew or telemetry. This is Mission Control Houston, and there it is, Soyuz MS-17 under its main parachute. And as we described before, the white smoke is the nominal venting of hydrogen peroxide and oxygen into the atmosphere right on time, right on schedule. We're landing planned about 10 minutes and 50 seconds from now. Reports now uh, from the landing site from the Antonov 26 uh, command and control flying aircraft indicate that the crew is in great shape. The They've reported uh, everything is nominal on board the Soyuz. The value not able. Don't worry, this is not a fire. Over. Descending through a cloudless sky on a Saturday morning in Kazakhstan, Soyuz MS-17 with Rubens, Rizhikov, and Kudsperchkov aboard. Now nine and a half minutes from touchdown. Are you ready? Yes. 4.5 is the altitude on the input panel. Hmm? One more time, five minutes past. Let's do it one more time. Less than nine minutes until touchdown, uh, the Soyuz altimeter soon to be activated to measure uh, the distance uh, between the Soyuz and uh, land and the rate of descent. All that information being fed into the Soyuz computers that will trigger the soft landing engines firing just milliseconds before touchdown. Okay. Or the descent is 
Descent is in progress. Pressure is 411. CLS 0405. Copy. Altitude 3890. The beeping sound you hear is a radio beacon on the Soyuz uh, spacecraft that uh, is relaying uh, its uh, position back uh, for telemetry on the ground. The Soyuz is very stable. The winds are virtually non-existent uh, on the ground uh, at the landing site, according to the latest reports. Uh, put on the kneecaps. Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, with the search and recovery forces and the embedded NASA personnel are now circling uh, the landing zone, preparing to touch down in sequential fashion within minutes after the Soyuz lands. Those search and recovery forces are maintaining good two-way communications with the crew on board. Altitude 500 meters. Control altitude. Standing by for landing. Stopwatch is on. Just relax. In the descent module, uh, the three crew members have cocked their seats in the landing position, tighten their uh, straps against uh, their Soko launch and entry suits just a bit tighter as they prepare for touchdown. Three hundred difference as sixty meters. Unintelligible meters. Copy. Copy, thank you. Sandwiched uh, between the launch of a Soyuz vehicle and next week's launch of a SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle, Soyuz spacecraft is minutes away from touchdown on the steppe of Kazakhstan. One, 1,500 meters. Mm -hmm. 
One of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, now in view. That uh, is the foreshadowing of uh, your being able to see the horizon shortly. Copy, I confirm, 1,000 meters. Just 1,000 meters off the ground. Some two and a half minutes until touchdown. Copy, 800. Copy, 700. Copy, 500 meters. Crew, get ready for landing. Just over a minute until touchdown, everything looking good. Touchdown. Touchdown confirmed at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time, 10.55 a.m. in Kazakhstan on a Saturday morning. After 185 days in space and a mission spanning 2,960 orbits of the Earth and 78.4 million miles, Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, and Sergei Kudsvertskov are back on terra firma. At this point, uh, the Russian Mi-8 helicopters with the search and recovery forces uh, in tow will begin uh, to descend one by one, first uh, to erect an inflatable medical tent nearby the capsule, and then begin the process of extracting the crew.
A view of the landing site, uh, about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jez, Kazgan, Kazakhstan. Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, circling uh, the landing zone where the Soyuz MS-17 touched down about three minutes or so ago at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time on Saturday as uh, the Soyuz MS-17 is back on Earth with Kate Rubens, Sergei Rizhikov, and Sergei Kudzverchkov. Confirmation now being received from the search and recovery forces uh, that the Soyuz MS-17 landed upright. So the uh, crew will be extracted from the top hatch on the Soyuz once uh, a ladder is uh, erected alongside the spacecraft. Again, you can see uh, three of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters on the ground to begin the process of erecting uh, this inflatable medical tent to which the crew members will be brought inside following uh, their extraction from the vehicle and a few minutes to sit in chairs to get their land legs back a bit once uh, they are pulled out of the spacecraft. This is Mission Control Houston. Once again, uh, the Soyuz MS-17 landed at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time, about 91 miles uh, to the southeast of Jez Kazgan, following a normal, uneventful entry. All of the uh, entry uh, sequence of events went by the book as planned. The uh, three crew members uh, in uh, the descent module of the Soyuz following uh, the undocking earlier this evening from the International Space Station. They are back on Earth uh, awaiting their extraction. Compliments of the search and recovery forces uh, whose Russian Mi-8 helicopters are now landing one by one to uh, move their way toward the spacecraft and begin the process of getting the crew out, putting them in chairs near the capsule itself so that they can have an opportunity to uh, get their land legs back a bit before they're carried in their chairs inside uh, the inflatable medical tent to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits and into more comfortable clothing for medical testing. The three crew members then will be flown by helicopters some two hours and 15 minutes uh, to the staging city in Karaganda, Kazakhstan, where uh, the crew members will split up Rubens boarding a uh, NASA plane to fly back to Houston with uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov boarding a Gagarin cosmonaut training aircraft to fly back to their training base and their homes in Star City, Russia, just outside of Moscow.
With us uh, on a satellite uh, phone from the landing site is NASA Public Affairs Officer Courtney Beasley. Courtney, uh, you are down on the ground very quickly as well. Just within minutes of touchdown, uh, we, do, we are looking at helicopters, not yet uh, seeing TV of the spacecraft at the landing site, so fill us in on what you're seeing. Rob, it's great to hear from you. As you said, I'm here at the landing site. There are still some helicopters touching down right now. Um, it was an upright landing, and it looks like the crew has been waving to the personnel outside of the capsule. Um, our helicopter, the skies are as clear as they can get. We actually got a visual of the capsule 10 minutes before touchdown, and we were able to follow it from that planet mark all the way down to the ground. We were one of the first helicopters out, and I'm on the ground right now. They're putting the stand up getting ready to extract the crew. What, uh, what was the flight like uh, from uh, your staging point in Jezkazgan to the landing site? At what point did you uh, pick up the Soyuz, and uh, how was uh, the touchdown? Could you see the soft landing engines from your perspective? Yeah, Rob, the skies are clear. The crew could not have asked for a more beautiful day to touch down here and breathe this fresh air here back on Earth for the first time in 185 days. Again, about 57 degrees here, clear skies. We got a visual of the capsule about 10 minutes before it touched down. We were able to follow the capsule all the way down to the ground. The capsule did have an upright landing. They have the stand around the capsule right now. They've opened it up, and they're ready to extract the crew. We expect that Commander Sergei Rizhikov will be first out. And uh, we should be uh, receiving a video from uh, the uh, landing site from the spacecraft here momentarily, and we now have video, Courtney, as uh, we watch uh, the search and recovery forces uh, surrounding uh, the spacecraft. Give us uh, a play-by-play -play of what you're seeing. Yeah, Rob, there are two personnel on top of the stand right now. They are uh, waiting to open the capsule up. Um, they're actually starting to put up this uh, medical tent where the crew will go for medical evaluation um, after they are extracted and get an opportunity to sit in those chairs for a few minutes. Um, so right now we're just standing by for them to open it up and start extracting the crew. Hang in there with us, uh, Courtney. Uh, we uh, we lost uh, the video fee. We only had it for a moment. Uh, so keep no, uh, providing no us uh, with what you're seeing uh, as uh, recovery developments unfold uh, at the spacecraft. No problem, Rob. They're wiping off the top right now. Again, we should just be a couple seconds away from opening up. And uh, once uh, the three crew members uh, are out of the spacecraft, uh, I assume that they've uh, put chairs up uh, near uh, the uh, spacecraft itself. What uh, will be the scenario uh, and the sequence of events after that? Yeah, Rob, they're actually setting those chairs up as we speak. Two of them are already on the ground set up um, just a couple feet away from the capsule itself. These crew members will be carried out by one. At that point, they'll get to sit down, kind of catch their breath from that ride down. They'll get to make their first call back to Earth, whether it's to family or friends, get to tell them about their trip home back to Earth. And they'll sit there for a few minutes, get a chance to um, recuperate. And from there, they'll head into the medical tents for further medical evaluation. Um, in those chairs, they'll get their first medical evaluation as well. The uh, choreography of uh, how the search and recovery forces uh, deploy the helicopters and uh, arrive at the timing that they do is always uh, very stark to me. Uh, give us uh, your impressions. This is the first time you have been at a landing. Give us your impressions of uh, how uh, this all unfolded uh, from your perspective. Yeah, one thing to watch it on TV completely another thing to be here in person. The second we got the visual of the capsule coming down, about 10 minutes, 
touched it down. I just had goosebumps, and those goosebumps have not gone away. It was so incredibly exciting. We were one of the helicopters on the ground, um, and then some helicopters followed us. I was actually able to dial in before the last helicopter had touched down. And Rob, we're going to start extracting our crew now. Keep uh, keep providing us uh, with your uh, with your visuals, Courtney. We do not have TV at the moment. Uh, we're expecting it shortly, but uh, keep us surprised as to what you're seeing, who is getting out first, and what they're doing with the crew. Yeah, Rob. There's about four personnel on top of this stand right now that goes around the castle. That stand has a ladder for the personnel to get up on, and it also has a slide in which they slide those crew members down one by one. At that point, um, the medical personnel is able to carry them over to those chairs we were just talking about, where they'll get their medical evaluation, be able to make those first calls from Earth, and be able to recuperate a little bit before heading over to the medical tent. Um, it looks like some pictures are being taken right now before they extract the crew, but otherwise, it looks like we're just moments away from Commander Sergei Rizhikov coming out. What is uh, the timeline uh, and the sequence of activities after uh, the crew makes its way into the medical tent for their initial uh, evaluations? Yeah, so after um, their are complete, they will be carried over to the medical tent, which is a short distance away from where we are now. Um, those personnel will conduct a more in-depth medical evaluation. Um, the crew will also undergo a series of field tests. Kate Rubens, in particular, will undergo a test conducted by our human research program called Standard Measures, and that's just a set of measures taken um, after landing uh, to characterize the effects of living and working in the microgravity environment. Once those tests are complete, the crew and personnel will head back to their designated helicopters. From there, they'll head to the airport in Caraganda, where Rubens will board the NASA plane back to Houston, and the cosmonauts will board their aircraft to return to their training base in Star City, Russia. Courtney, hang in there with us. Uh, we're going to be coming uh, back to you here momentarily. Uh, just to recap, uh, this is Courtney Beasley uh, at the landing site, NASA Public Affairs Officer. She uh, rode on one of the first helicopters uh, from Jez Kazgan uh, earlier to the landing site where the Soyuz NS-17 touched down about uh, 15 minutes ago at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 10.55 a.m. Kazakhstan Time at the landing site. It was a uh, perfectly normal re-entry for Rubens Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov. All of the uh, entry sequence of events uh, were uh, by the book. Everything went uh, normally, the uh, separation of the modules, the deployment of the parachutes, and a touchdown occurring uh, actually about a minute earlier than had been predicted, almost a uh, bullseye touchdown with uh, the Soyuz sticking the landing, landing upright, which of course helps to, to facilitate the extraction of the crew. Courtney, what's, uh, what's going on there right now? Yeah, Rob, it looks like those um, initial pictures have been taken, and it looks like they are moving down to extract their first crew member. There's about four personnel again on top of the stand around the Soyuz, and here we have it. Sergei Rizhikov is now coming out. And some shaking hands, some high fives and a lot of smiles on the top of that stand right now. He's turning around and giving the crowd a wave. So excited to be back home. And he's going down the slide right now. Again, the medical personnel um, right on the slide to carry him over to the chairs just a couple feet away. and they're starting the extraction for the second crew member as we speak. Cool. 
and Rob in the medical chairs, they'll be seated in the same configuration that they rode home and they're still used on. Courtney, uh, we're standing by for uh, the resumption of video from the landing site. And uh, based on your report, Rizhikov is out, and uh, we'll be waiting uh, for you to report on the next uh, crew member to be extracted. Yeah, Rob, we're just um, standing by waiting. It should just be a couple moments from now. Again, the medical personnel on top, ready to help extract and welcome these crew members home. Courtney, sometimes uh, at these uh, landing sites, uh, the locals uh, who know as much about uh, landing operations as almost the rest of us uh, will show up uh, to greet the crew members. Any sign of any locals? No, Rob. Um, don't see any sign of any locals. That may just be due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, and without video, you can't tell, but most people here do have on masks to follow those COVID-19 guidelines. And we now have video uh, from the landing site. We just uh, caught a glimpse of Sergey Rizhikov, and we're looking at uh, the uh, crew members uh, being extracted uh, and other uh, technical personnel clamoring uh, at the very top hatch uh, that you described a moment ago. Rizhikov uh, is smiling, being, being attended to by the usual uh, complement of uh, Russian Search and recovery personnel. Blood pressure, 94. Heart rate. Rizhikov uh, having completed uh, his second flight into space, 358 days on his two missions. 176, 111. Rizhikov served as the Expedition 64 commander before handing off command of the International Space Station on Thursday to Shannon Walker the NASA astronaut who will herself be handing over command uh, to Aki Hoshide on April 27th after Hoshide arrives on board on the SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle, which is scheduled for launch next Thursday. And if you're looking at Sergei Rizhikov from the front, our NASA personnel are to the left of him ready to welcome Kate Rubens back home. You're watching uh, at the top ledge. live television from the landing site in Kazakhstan to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. Sergey Rizhikov out of the Soyuz MS-17, awaiting uh, the extraction of the other two crew members. The crew commander uh, parameters. Please do not. On the right, carrying a bouquet of flowers is uh, cosmonaut Yuri Malenchenko from the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. Presumably, uh, that bouquet of flowers uh, to be handed to Kate Rubens after she's out of the Soyuz. 135 by 85. And Rob, it looks like one of the personnel just went into the Soyuz to help the extraction process right now. And here's our second crew member. Okay. Rob, Kate Rubens is outside of the capsule right now, giving high fives and all smiles. And a thing at Kate. Here, right here. Welcome home. And here she comes. 
An even 300 days in space on her two missions, Kate Rubens is home. A lot of laughs and smiles right now as Kate is coming down. Let's slide down. Okay, here. Hold her and let's go. And she's being brought over to her chair right now. Okay. okay, Rob. Bring her Kate Rubin her has been seated in her chair. Sit down. Again, all smiles Great. from both Rubens and our NASA personnel. And Kate Rubin is now receiving flowers. A beautiful bouquet. Yuri, thank you. Thank you. Yuri Malenchenko handing uh, Rubens that bouquet of flowers uh, on the left of your screen is uh, Rubens' flight surgeon, Dr. Natasha Cho. On the right is uh, a Russian nurse, Roxana Batsmanova, who uh, operates every uh, landing operation as one of the complement of NASA nurses. And Rob, we just asked Kate how her ride down was, and she said, quote, it was awesome. Please step back. So Rubens and Rizhikov now out of the Soyuz, just waiting for Duke Spiritskov. Sergey, please move over there. And Kate Rubens just realized Drew Morgan was here, so that was also a good reunion. <laughs> on a placid Saturday morning on the steppe of Kazakhstan, uh, Sergei Kudsverchkov about to be extracted. Pressure? No, oxygen. Oxygen 95. And Kutzkov is now out. The measurements have been taken, and I will give it to you right away. Rob, well, again, these chairs are where the crew will sit for a short time for their first set of medical evaluations, and they'll also be able to make their first phone call from back here on Earth. This is also a period of time for their equilibrium to get readjusted to gravity okay, after okay. living and working in space. Okay, you ready? And Kuspirskov is now being carried over to his chair. So all three crew members now extracted and seated.
flight surgeon is taking measurements. Television uh, continues to come in from the landing site uh, where just uh, 30 minutes ago, the uh, Soyuz MS-17 crew, the Expedition 64 trio of Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov landed upright in their Soyuz vehicle to complete their 185-day mission. You just caught a glimpse a moment ago of the nearby uh, inflatable medical tent, the orange tent, that uh, they will be carried into a few moments from now to begin medical tests before uh, boarding uh, individual helicopters for about a two-hour, 15-minute flight back to the staging city of Karaganda. Okay. Courtney, I think we have you uh, reestablished now. Uh, tell us uh, what the scene is at uh, is looking like uh, at the landing site. Uh, well, as you know, all three crew members now in their seats. Kate Rubin's having conversation with the NASA personnel on the side. Again, she said that her ride home was awesome, and she just said that it's really moving on a lot of things. So, we're excited to be home. I know she had a great time living and working aboard the International Space Station. Again, they'll. Sam these chairs for their first set of medical evaluations before being carried over to the tent. And Kate Rubens is now on the phone making her first call from back here on Earth. Sverchkov, uh, having completed uh, the first mission in his career of 185 days that included a spacewalk last November with uh, Sergei Ryzhikov outside of the Poisk module that served as an airlock for the first time for a Russian spacewalk. Uh, that Poisk module was the departure point earlier this evening for the Soyuz MS-17. Not everybody's here yet. And Courtney, uh, even uh, in the remote uh, steppe of Kazakhstan, there's always time for a photo opportunity. Okay. One more picture of the crew commander. We should be seeing uh, the crew hoisted uh, in those chairs uh, to be brought into the medical tent uh, momentarily. For those uh, just joining us, 
The Soyuz MS-17 landed at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time, about 34 minutes ago. Russian Mi-8 helicopters carrying uh, members of the Search and Recovery Forces uh, quickly landed in sequential fashion, uh, one by one, on a perfectly clear morning on a Saturday morning on the steppe of Kazakhstan to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan to begin the extraction of the crew one by one. Rizhikov was first out, followed by Kate Rubens and then uh, Sergei Kud Sverchkov. And you can see uh, the crew members now uh, being raised in uh, the chairs to be brought uh, to the nearby medical tent. Courtney, uh, we see uh, Rizhikov signing uh, his spacecraft. Give us a, a quick glimpse as to what's going on. Yes, okay. Yeah, Rob, the group just took a big group photo with all of the personnel from Roscosmos and from NASA. Again, from here, the crew will be carried into the medical tent for further medical evaluation. Um, after those evaluations are finished, the crew and personnel will head back to their designated helicopters and they'll head to the airport in Karaganda where Rubens will board the NASA plane back to Houston and the two cosmonauts will board their aircraft to return to their training base in Star City, Russia. So Rob, with the crew now headed into the medical tent for further medical evaluation, that will wrap up my report from the field. Rob, it's been an absolute honor to be here at this landing representing NASA Public Affairs, and we're all looking forward to seeing you back in Houston. Rob, back to you. Thank you very much, Courtney, and have a uh, safe trip back to Houston. We'll look forward to seeing you and hearing more about your trip. Uh, as uh, we lost our television feed just a moment ago, you saw Kate Rubens uh, being carried uh, toward the uh, inflatable medical tent following uh, Sergei Rizhikov, uh, the Soyuz commander, signing the outside of the uh, descent module with uh, the date of landing that has now become a tradition for returning Soyuz crews. The uh, three uh, Soyuz crew members are now inside uh, the inflatable medical tent at the landing site, just a few feet away from uh, the descent module that touched down in perfect fashion at 11.55 p.m. Central Time, 12.55 a.m. Eastern Time to wrap up uh, the 185-day mission of Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. There will be a period, as you heard from uh, Public Affairs Officer Courtney Beasley, a period of uh, medical testing inside the medical tent, after which uh, the crew members will board uh, individual helicopters for a flight back to the staging city of Karaganda, where they will split up. Rubens boarding a NASA plane for a flight back to Houston, and uh, Rizhikov and Kud Sverchkov uh, boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight uh, back to Star City, Russia, and their training base just outside of Moscow.
This is Mission Control Houston. The uh, successful landing, uh, the very smooth and uneventful landing of the Soyuz MS-17 has brought Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kudsverchkov back to Earth after 185 days in space, a 78.4 million mile mission. Everything went uh, perfectly throughout the course of the night from uh, hatch closure through undocking through uh, the deorbit burn and all of the entry sequence of events that resulted in an upright landing for their descent module, a bullseye landing about 91 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan. The crew is out of the Soyuz. They're in the uh, nearby medical tent, getting out of their Sokol launch and entry suits, having an opportunity uh, to receive uh, initial medical testing before they board respective helicopters to fly back to the staging city of Karaganda, Kazakhstan, where uh, they will split up with Rubens returning uh, to Houston on a NASA plane and uh, Ryzhikov and Kudsverchkov returning to their training base in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. This is uh, one of uh, a continuing series of events in uh, one of the busiest periods in international space station, if not human spaceflight history, where 14 astronauts and cosmonauts are coming and going from the station on four different spacecraft over a three-week period. Next up is next uh, Thursday's launch of the Crew-2 astronauts on board a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, led by uh, spacecraft commander Shane Kimbrough on the right of your screen, Megan MacArthur, the Dragon pilot on the left, and uh, the multinational crew rounding out Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency and Aki Hoshide of uh, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. They are scheduled to launch from launch pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center next Thursday, April 22nd at 6.11 a.m. Eastern Time with NASA TV coverage beginning at 2 a.m. Eastern Time Docking scheduled one week from uh, today, actually from Friday, uh, in the early morning hours to bring uh, the station crew temporarily to an 11 person crew. So we'll be following all of the countdown activities throughout the week with a series of briefings uh, throughout uh, the week uh, from the Kennedy Space Center leading up to their launch next Thursday morning. In the meantime, uh, you can follow and uh, recap all of the events from this evening on the NASA television video file that's coming up Saturday morning at 4.30 a.m. Central Time, 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time, that will recap uh, all of the activities associated with the return to, crew, the return to Earth of the Expedition 64 crew of uh, Kate Rubens, Sergei Ryzhikov, and Sergei Kud Sverchkov. The crew is safely back on Earth, soon to be uh, back home in Houston and in Star City, Russia. So we'd like to thank you for uh, joining us throughout the course of the night tonight and uh, to follow all of the exploits of the expedition crews on board the International Space Station on www.nasa.gov. For now, have a great weekend. This is Mission Control Houston. It's one of the best kept secrets of space science. For transporting ambitious and hefty scientific experiments to near space. Though they're not as flashy or headline grabbing as rockets, 